Sup gamers, welcome back to some more regularly scheduled Legends of Runeterra content. Today we have the, the Doomsday video. Um, I was initially just going to watch this by myself, but I watched the first minute and a half of this video, and I already have <clears throat> some comments and things that I would like to add to it, and so I'm going to talk over and discuss the rest of it. But anyway, so they're talking about the state of the game here for uh, Legends of Runeterra. <clears throat> Kind of about like introdu introducing themselves. Dave Guskin, otherwise known as Dave Tron, on Twitter. Yep. Yep. So Andre Veyrun, um, League Studios is what they call their entire umbrella of Riot Games related stuff. So <clears throat> your Valorant, your League of Legends, your TFT, your Legends of Runeterra, all of them are under League Studios. So Andre Veyrun oversees all of those departments, really. And Mark Merrill is just the, the co-founder of, uh, of Riot. The current product lead and will soon be our new executive producer of yep. Legends of Runeterra. I don't, I don't have my baton on me, unfortunately. I can't hand it off. We'll get it. So Dave's, Dave's handing off executive producer to Eric there, which is cool. Sure. So, uh, so this next bit... I'm or I already have an issue with because instead of going directly into talking about the stay of the game, uh, Mark talks about like how you know we used to, we were like big fans of CCGs and everything, right? Uh, you know, oh look, we we love we love our card games, we love creating cards, and he says like we love ha not having to make players spend hundreds of dollars to get the right decks, which is true specifically for games like Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering I found um not so much true for the likes of Pokemon right although Pokemon has its own issues and I don't know how like Yu-Gi-Oh Shadowverse uh, Duelist and all the rest of those card games go but in terms of um card acquisition being up in the hundreds of dollars I'd say that there are not many games that actually have that inherent issue overall the the draw of Legends of Runeterra, sure, it's like, oh, it's free to play, so you'd have to sink hundreds of dollars to learn a new card game, but the draw of it is that the game is beautiful, and 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 it plays out super smoothly. Like, I don't think that, I, I don't think that after a certain point of playing the game, that anyone thinks, wow, I'm sure glad I spent zero dollars on this. I always think, like, wow, I love these voice lines, I love these level up animations, I love how the game looks and feels to play. It just feels so natural to me now. And so, like, I, I already disagree with this <laughs> at the start here. I mean, like, yes, you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars to get the cards, but okay. Exactly, like, Shadow Isles deck should feel very different than Demacia and, you know, all of the combinations that we thought were really fun. And what's great is we, of course, we delivered that. Yeah. But we sort of, you know, never really get the formula right. We were always spending a lot more money uh, investing in the game and supporting yeah. the community that the game was bringing in, and so essentially being subsidized by our other products. Yep. So we tried a lot of things over the last couple of years to you know figure out. Did you try to fucking advertise the game? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm sorry. We tried a bunch of different things to try and grow the audience. I know I'm I'm pissed. Like I am angry about this. But there have been several instances in Riot articles where Legends of Runeterra hasn't been mentioned. The game itself has not had any sort of cross promotion or any sort of mention hardly at all on any of Riot's channels whatsoever. Like Legends of Runeterra has been its own little pocket that someone maybe have heard of back in 2020 when it first released in beta and then never heard of again because Riot never talks about this game. <laughs> you you didn't do everything to try and grow the audience. Nobody ever heard of it. In fact, there were even there were there were reply tweets to the state of the game tweets that everyone was making on Twitter where <laughs> Where they're like, oh, I had no idea this game existed and I love the lore and I would have loved to see more of this game. And so you didn't do everything. There are so many people out there that are heavily involved with the other titles that have no idea Legends of Runeterra even fucking exists. You didn't do everything to figure out how to grow the audience because you didn't advertise it ever. 
the content creators and, and the people on Twitter did a better job at advertising this game than you did, which is insanity. Not a brilliant oh my God. You know, anyway, this is the point that I got to that so I... We sort of reached a point where, you know, we had to make some changes to try to get to a place of sustainability because right. the players have been so committed to this game and, and we know so many people love the game that we want to keep finding a way to deliver this awesome game that, that people love. Yeah, I think the, the commitment and the love from the player base is one of the reasons we've got a lot of faith in the future of the game. Mm -hmm. that I mean, that, that, that does make me hopeful that Andre Veyrouten, whom, in my opinion, has not been... If I'm, I'm sorry, I mispronounced names, but I'm just getting all tied up here. Um, that he does, that someone who's not, in my opinion, closely tied to the game. Like you, the the people that I think of when I think of Legends of Runeterra, I think of like Brian Koplik, I think of uh, JP Jules, I think of of David Plink. You know, I I think of those people. I think of Ruben Zhu, who Ruben Zhu apparently is not on the game anymore because he's looking for work on LinkedIn. Uh, that's a whole nother thing. I think of those people when it comes to the Legends of Runeterra Riot representatives. I think of Vriss. Vriss no longer works for Riot now. I think of Three Greg. I think Three Greg also doesn't work for Riot anymore. I think of I Am Walrus. I Am Walrus isn't at Riot anymore. I do not think of Andre Veyrune. I am sorry. I, this is not like someone that I think of when I think of Legends of Runeterra. But for him to be like the general overseer of league studios and saying that there is a future for the game does make me hopeful yeah you know we've had players come along for the journey with us a lot here yeah a lot of changes with pvp we've tried um doing lab of legends which then became the Temple mm -hmm. champions i remember and lab of legends seen is that we've spent a lot of time on making the pvp side of the game um you know much better and players are actually spending a lot of their time in pve so here's the issue that i have with this statement specifically so the reason why people are spending time in pve is because the requirement that you have to unlock cards is even less in pve um so in a way like yes people are spending a lot of time in pve but you don't need to unlock decks you don't need to know meta stats you don't need to know all of these things that go into playing the pvp side of the card game to play pve and that's fine like i think that PvE has very much its own audience and has very much its own focus where people can just enjoy the card game against these AI matches, basically. Now, I'm not a fan of PvE. I'm not saying, like, shut it down or anything, right? But I'm not a fan of PvE because it always felt like AI matches just with, like, weird modifiers stacked on top. That is just a personal opinion. The thing is... When it comes to the advertising and the appeal of, of CCGs, the appeal of the CCG is not a PvE aspect. Like, playing Solitaire is not the reason that you buy a deck of cards. You buy a deck of cards because you want to play other games against other people. I don't know, maybe you, maybe you play, like, Go Fish or something. <laughs> I, I, I'm blanking on, on my, my card games here. Or you, like, play poker, right? You, play, you like, play a game of Texas Hold'em or something. You're not going to buy a deck of cards because you want to play Solitaire the whole time. You buy them because... But then it's like, oh, well, you know, not everyone has time, so they're going to play the, the they're gonna play Solitaire in their spare time. It's like, yes, they are going to play Solitaire in their spare time because not everyone is always available for them. My analogy is falling apart here, so bringing it back to PvP, the reason why I think PvP also needs more of a focus is because it's something for people to look forward to. Like, PvE is something that you do. PvP is like, hey, there's the Worlds Tournament for the best Legends of Runeterra players in the PvP game mode that's coming out, and it's like this this entire international representation of the best players from this last year that are all going to be clashing for the, the greatest, for the title of the greatest Legends of Runeterra player on Earth. That is PvP. That is something that you look forward to. All of the content creators, or at least the largest ones, uh, the first three that come to mind for me are Grappler, Snowy, and and Maoshin Bay. All three of those people are PvP focused almost entirely. Snowy has done some Path of Champions content, like challenge content here and there, but for the most part, the the content is PvP. Um, other content creators I can think of in this space Aikido uh, I say Aikido every time Aikido uh I don't know Puffball Panda you have um Meg Ferrari you have 
Oh, geez, I'm losing my I'm losing my content creator names here. I'm sorry, fellas. Sir Termin is another one that I know of as well who uploads content. You have Scarzig, who is a caster for Legends of Runeterra, who also goes into playing the game and talking about the game. And you have uh, Boulevard, who makes his own like stats and everything on the PvP side of things. The PvE is good for the players, but it doesn't have the reach it doesn't have the sustainability that pvp does so it's kind anyway. of like hey we it's probably appropriate for us to shift the focus a little bit maybe line it up a little bit better where we're spending more of our time on pve because that's where the players are yeah i mean like you mentioned lab of legends when that mode first came out it shot up in popularity it the reason why the reason why lab of legends shot up in popularity i think is because it was new uh, genuine. I played Lab of Legends. I played the um, the duo mode where you and a friend would both control one hand, and one of you would play the attacking turns, and the other person would play the defending turns. And it was very fun. It was a very very fun game mode. Um, anyway. It like spiked over even like standard ranked at that time, uh, and that's why we've been building on that mode for so long, uh, developing ultimately into the Path of Champions, and mm -hmm. it continues to be our most popular mode. Uh, where both the actives and the hours, really. Players are playing more games in that mode than even in standard ranked. I also think that um, standard ranked... So I have a couple of issues with standard ranked, but it's we'll like keep going here. Into the system's focus. It's going to be on Path of Champions, correct? Right, yeah. We know we have an excellent card game, and we mm -hmm. don't want to lose that. But we're going to be shifting more of our attention, more of our time toward improving the Path of Champions mode. Ultimately, sure. what we're doing is we're taking the resources we have, and we're applying them to where the players really are. This upcoming set that's releasing soon is going to be our last set, as players currently know them. Yikes. That doesn't mean we're not going to be releasing more champions, um, but it does mean that we're going to be changing the focus to be more on those champions in the path of champions you two have given a lore a ton of support over the years and i mm. really appreciate that um you know i think that's continued up to today and will continue in the future oh. i don't know man I, I like when you think of as well all of all of the content creators that were invited to the riot event that's happening next week there's none of them are interested in the pve aspect <laughs> uh, uh what was the, there was also something up here that was said uh, the last set is the players that we know them. Uh, <clears throat> PvE continues to be the most popular game mode. I'm really curious as to what that number is. Is that like the number of concurrent players or the number of monthly active players? Or um, like they have 24-hour spikes on people playing Path of Champions? I think like Path of Champions is a good thing about it as well is that there's no pressure really. Whereas when you're playing standard ranked, you're always having to play into standard ranked. But what I think has happened here with standard ranked is that rotation was a mistake. People are going to Path of Champions because rotation is awful. <laughs> um, I know that it's like rotation for, for the long term, the longevity of a card game is good because on one hand, you can also argue that uh, rotation was good because it makes it so that not every deck is running Vile Feast. Now you have to find other answers inside of Shadow Isles. But once everybody figured out how Shadow Isles works, now every Shadow Isles deck, instead of running Vile Feast, now runs Hate Spike. And now instead of um, running the... Instead of playing Twist of Fate in your Bilgewater decks, nobody plays Bilgewater at all because the region is not that great right now. But... Um, I mean, I, I've played like a Nami Kennen list recently and had some success with it in Masters, but that's also just because I'm criminally insane in that way. And to me, like, saying that you want to develop more on Path of Chan... Okay, sorry, I lost my point. The point of, of that I'm trying to get at here is that Standard Ranked has restricted the gameplay down to where we're seeing the same five decks all the time. In fact, if I go over to my... Uh, Runeterra AR history right now, I can guarantee you that I've been playing against pretty much the same four or five decks for the last week or so. Um, and that's because there aren't any other really good decks out there inside of Standard. There's not a whole lot of different uh, gameplay styles that you can find inside of Standard. You're either playing 
you know, mid-range with gem or some other variation of, of Elder Dragon list, or you're playing Karma Set Control in one of its many iterations, or you're playing Morgana with Mordekaiser. And aside from that, like, you don't really see a lot of variants aside from a couple of freak decks like Jinx Cannon kind of pops up every once in a bit, or... uh. I don't know. <laughs> I was thinking like Darius Nar, but no, Darius Nar is just a mid-range overwhelm deck. Or you have elusives, but elusives is just go wide and, and play elusive cards to beat things more quickly than, than Gem can set up usually. And that is boring, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Like Eternal has so much more variation because it has all of the cards, right? And the second thing is that Players who play uh, nice little voice crack there, but players who are coming into the game to play Legends of Rune Terra don't inherently know that it's split into standard and eternal because most people don't talk about that fact. But when you get cards from your weekly vault, you're getting cards that can be in either eternal or standard. So all that time that you've spent in the game trying to get cards over the course of a week has now made it so that you're getting cards that are not even valid for the ranked mode that you want to play right now. You're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm new to Legends of Runeterra. I'm going to go ahead and try to climb to Masters this season. But you've gotten Parade Electro Rig or something in your in your um, weekly vault this week. And you're like, oh, crap. Well, I spent all this time playing the game last week, and I get rewarded with a card that I can't even use. I mean, Parade Electro Rig is, Electro Rig is a bad card to begin with, but you, you understand my point. So people are generally de-incentivized from playing the ranked mode because they can't they can't play the game with the cards that they're given and and the variance of gameplay sucks <laughs> so why would you play standard ranked also once you reach most people are happy with just being like i'm gonna reach masters now because masters placement doesn't matter for seasonals and now because uh, everything's like inside of Gauntlet. Why would you play ranked anymore when you can just go, okay, I'm going to build my standard decks. I'm not going to play ranked at all. I'm going to go into Gauntlet, just take a deck from somewhere else, play my Gauntlets regularly, get my trophies. And then once my Gauntlets are done, not touching ranked, going to go straight to Path of Champions to keep enjoying the game that I play. It's not, it's not like I, I genuinely don't think that Path of Champions is popular because of a i don't think path of champions is popular because of it being a great game mode it's okay but i'm not a fan of it so i, I genuinely i really don't see the appeal of it i think path of champions is popular because it is um because it's not ranked because <laughs> like, the format for rank sucks ass <laughs> it's gonna be all right the resources we have that as we will focus to be more on and also uh the last set as players know them probably not going to be releasing cards as frequently um probably going to be reducing them to like one champion release every couple months or something but we'll see and i really appreciate that um you know i think that's continued up to we have we have also seen vir virtually zero support from other riot things so i do think that this statement's a little bit scripted but, in the future uh, very much so i mean i think we're doing this across riot as a whole in terms of how we try and pull like our world building our storytelling together and looking for opportunities for the different games to you know support each other more we want to get a lot more connection between lore and you know league of legends team fight tactics and wild rift you know get some of that sharing of, of ideas back and forth you know lore obviously has a strength in the pde section but then of course tft has the strategy stuff and League of Legends has like the champions. Yeah, so that takes us to, you know, what I think is an exciting new future for lore. Um, Eric, you want to kind of talk us through what's happening with this new focus on the Path of Champions? Yeah, absolutely. We've actually been working on stuff for a while. So uh, one of the big things that are coming out. Man. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> really soon. Is oh, man. Expansion to the map of Runeterra with the Freilure section. Um, so right now, players have been beating up on Asol for a while. They're yep. looking for something new. Uh, and Lissandra is going to be our new big bad. Uh, not cool. Jennifer, sorry. No, it's okay. Get her. Get her out of here. <laughs> uh, let's see. This this also talking about, like, oh, TFT has strategy stuff and League has the champions. Like, yes, Legends of Runeterra also has the champions with a ton of personality. 
but we're not capitalizing on that. I guess you are in Path of Champions. So, you know, maybe that's correct. I, I, I'm willing to be wrong there. Um, so right now, players have been beating up on Aesol for a while. They've been looking for something new. Uh, and Lissandra is going to be our new big bad. Uh, not trying to burn. Sorry. No, it's okay. Get her. <laughs> Break it up. Yeah, we Get her out of here. Yeah. Um, uh, players are going to try their best, uh, but we're, we're really mm -hmm. excited to see, so we'll mm -hmm. see what they mm -hmm. think of it. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. Uh, and that's intentionally so. Uh, so. And how OP can I be? You can be OP because... Yeah. Itself. So we call it constant. soon after that. Oh, uh, we're gonna do what we think is the full expansion to the mode itself. So we call it constellations. So an expansion for Path of Champions. That's pretty cool, I, I suppose. But it's a feature in which we take the star powers that players have now with up to three power. And I do, I do find it a, a little irritating that they're like, uh, we're shifting focus to PVE, and then there's like new, new star powers and stuff. Is there any? Sort of. Is there any sort of talk about PvP? Is there any? Nope. There. It just looks like they're they're talking about. All right. Yes. Yeah, so that's like the future of Legends of Runeterra. There's like, man, the rest of this just feels like such a nothing burger. There, there is absolutely. There's just nothing going on here. You, know, you can see, like, Sir Termond on Stay of the Game and Boulevard on Stay of the Game as well. Oh, man. I'm... <sighs> I'm frustrated, man. I think that PvP is really a unique puzzle to solve and is the main draw of CCGs. Like, again, I'm not going to be buying a deck of cards to play Solitaire. <laughs> That's just not going to happen. So... Um, well, good luck, Legends of Runeterra. We'll see how Path of Champions works out for you. That's all I got.